namaste and good evening let's start with the prayers om guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara guru sakshat para brahma tasmai shri gurave namaha om sahana bhavatu sahano bhunaktu sah viryam karvavahai tejasvinavadhi tamastu ma vidvishavahai om shanti 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 now we'll chant mahamrutyunjya mantra three times to pray for those who are suffering Om Trayambakam Yajamahi Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urubarukam Ivabandhana Mutyor Mukshi Amamruta Om Trayambakam Yajamahi Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urubarukam Ivabandhana Mutyor Mukshi Amamruta Om Trayambakam Yajamahi Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urubarukam Ivabandhana Mutyor Mukshi Amamruta Om Shanti 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 We'll start class 23. Welcome everyone. In the last class, we had covered in Sundarakanda that Bibhishana tried to make Ravana, his elder brother, understand that war with Lord Rama is going to be the death of the whole clan and it is good for him that he should return Sita to Rama. Even though Bibhishana said some really wise things to Ravana, Ravana in his arrogance, he just kicked him out. He said, you talk like enemy while being supported by me. It's better that you go to enemy and give your counsel to them. So Bhivishna again and again bows down to his feet and said, even if you hit me, you are my elder brother, like my father. And I'll try to tell you what is good for you. So please listen to my advice. And Ravana just was furious and he said, the only reason I'm not killing you is that you are my brother. Just leave from here. Go away. And Vibhishana then rose to get up and left to Lord Rama. He comes, he was a devotee to Lord Rama. He was devotee of Lord Rama. He comes, surrenders to Lord Rama. Lord Rama made him the king of Lanka. And uh, then question is that how to cross the ocean and Vibhishana recommends, he advises Lord Rama that even though your arrows are capable of drying up the ocean, it's better that you start with a prayer. You start, you pray to ocean God. So there is a deity for oceans, presiding deity for rivers, mountains. So when you pray to ocean, when you worship ocean, you are worshipping that presiding deity. So Lord Rama heeded to that advice and then he started praying, fasting and praying to the ocean God. 
when Vibhishana had left Ravana's court and came to Lord Rama, Ravana sent a couple of spies, couple of messengers to find out what is happening. So they came, so they were spies, they took the form of monkeys and they got mixed in the army of monkeys of Lord Rama and they saw everything what Lord Rama is doing. And he, they saw that how Lord Rama received a person from enemy's camp so with so much compassion and not only he made Bibhishana free from fear of Ravana, he gave the kingdom of Lanka to Bibhishana. And with all this with so much humility, he addressing Bibhishana as friend. When they saw all that, this beauty, this glory of the Lord, his giving the fearlessness to the ones who take refuge in him, they became so overwhelmed with joy that they started, sing, they started singing the glories of the Lord themselves. And in the process, they forgot that they have the spies of Ravana here and assuming the form of monkey. So once they forgot, they came in their sort of original form of demons. And when monkeys now saw them, they understood them as spies and they captured them. So they captured and tied them and they took it, took them to their king, Sugriva. Sugriva, Sugriva gives the orders that cut, cut their nose and ears. So that was sort of a punishment many times they were giving to spies, uh, sometimes killing them, sometimes not killing them, but giving this punishment. So he said, send them back after cutting their nose and ears. So all the monkeys, they tied them very, uh, both these spies and uh, they were taking them rounds like they were tying and just making them go round here and there in the monkey army so that everybody sees that there are Ravana spies and they are going to be punished. And they were beating them in the process while taking them in a procession. When these spies they understood what is going to happen. They started crying. They started asking forgiveness, but monkeys won't hear any of those things. So finally, they said that it is in the name of Lord Rama that we beseech you, please leave us. When monkeys heard that and they were these spies were crying, the news reached to Lakshmana and he called them and he laughed and made them free. And he said, go back to Ravana and give this letter, this missive of mine to him. So he wrote a message for Ravana that you improve your ways very quickly. If you want the good for your clan, return Janki, return Sita immediately to Lord Ravana. So like that, those spies were very happy. They were made free without losing their noses and ears. And they went to Ravana. When Ravana saw them, he laughed. He said, oh, you come back. So what's the news? And uh, he, of course, sent these spies to find out what is happening to Vibhishana. But also he wanted the measure of Rama's army. And what are they doing? They had already reached 
the other side of the ocean. So Ravana in his arrogance, he asked them, these his spies that, oh, did you even meet them or not? Did they, is it, was it that they uh, left the place hearing my glory and in fear of me, the whole people they left or are they still there? So like that, he is trying to boast himself. And uh, these two spies, they did not answer anything. They remained silent and then Ravana asked, what has happened to you? Why are you not answering? You seem very dazed. And then they bowed down to Ravana and said, O oh Lord, O oh King, we went after Bhivishana as you had instructed us and we saw everything what happened there. The moment Bibhishana reached, he sought refuge in Lord Rama. Lord Rama immediately gave him, made him free from fear, all the fears. And not only that, he made him king of Lanka. Ravana was quite surprised to hear that. But then they said that afterwards we were captured, being recognized as your spies. And monkeys wanted to cut our ears and nose. But Lakshmana had mercy on us. And he allowed us to go free. And then they said, as far as their army is concerned, the strength of the commanders are concerned. Their enthusiasm. All that is without bounds, like nobody can describe it, like how big is their army, millions and millions of monkey chieftains. They all are roaring, they all are extremely powerful. Everybody is like, we will beat Ravana, we will kill Ravana. And then these two spies, they wanted to sort of, because they had already seen Lord Rama, they had already felt the devotion in their heart for Lord Rama. And they did not, even though they were spies of Ravana, they did not like Ravana's base so much now. So they wanted to put Ravana down a little bit. So the way they started giving the report that we do not see any monkey in the whole army who is not capable of defeating you in the war. So all these millions of monkeys, every one of them is capable of defeating you in the world. And the one who came here, who earlier burned your city and killed your son, referring to Hanumanji, he is probably the weakest among all the monkeys. So like that, uh, they are giving their report, which is factually not true, but probably their intention was to just make Ravana very, feel very depressed and give up on this war. And uh, then they said, Lord Rama, even though he has the capability to dry up the whole ocean through his arrows, but he asked your brother for advice and your brother asked him to pray to Sea God, Ocean God. And that's what Lord Rama is doing. When Ravana heard that, he started laughing and he said, you are praising my enemy so much, I understood how much is capability. And what else can be expected from such a person who gives so much importance to a coward like Vibhishana that is seeking his advice. So the ones, one who has his ministers as Vibhishana I, I, I can understand what kind of wisdom that person has. So don't tell me all these high things about Rama. The spies, they did not like that kind of words for Lord Rama. So at that time, they gave him the letter of Lakshmana, the missive, and said, the younger brother of Lord Rama has sent this message for you. Please read it. And when Ravana read the message, 
he of course did not like it he tried to he he was a little bit afraid in his heart but he tried to hide it and said oh ho so this person speaks a lot even though his words don't mean anything for me and uh, then these two spies said no no please lord uh, everything whatever is written in the letter is true so we also request you from our heart that your good lies in returning sita to lord ram then lord ram when ravana heard that that return sita to rama he was extremely furious he kicked them away and said move away i don't want to see your faces anymore i should have killed you for this but just move away because you have served me for so long i don't want to kill you right now but just just go away so they bowed down to ravana and then they left for lord rama anyway their heart was with lord rama so they went there surrender to lord and these two people they were sages in the previous incarnation and uh, because of a curse they had assumed the demonic forms so they again did gain their forms and memory of being sages and they went back to that path of doing their own sadhana own meditation praising lord rama now lord rama is trying to pray to ocean god so three days it three days passed he was just trying to pray to ocean god and there was no movement from the ocean like there was no nothing that ocean did to try to come to the terms that what lord rama is asking for so after that lord rama got up he was a little bit angry and he said sometimes even to show your love even to make other feel your love you have to show a little bit fear you have to uh, then only people understand even your love otherwise without fear people don't even understand your love so he asks lakshmana that bring my arrows and bow i'll just try up this ocean and then poet has given a few similes a beautiful similes so he is saying supplication before an idiot friendship with a rogue being a liberal with a miser talking the words of wisdom one who is completely attached to the worldly affairs a person who is very greedy trying to give him the lesson of for dispassion a lecture a discourse on the words of god on the place of god to a lustful person all these are as futile as sowing the seeds in a barren land means they do not bear any fruits so like that he is saying he took his bow and pulled out an arrow and lakshmana liked that course of action because he was always for just instead of praying to ocean just right up when lord rama hadn't even left the arrow but by the power of that arrow there was already a great discomfort in all the creatures of the ocean when ocean perceived that and it understood that lord rama is going to dry and all the creatures 
who depend upon it will die. Then he finally understood the power of Lord Rama. He took the form of a Brahmin. And in a plate, he brought a lot of jewels. So one of the ocean's name is that it is the having a lot of jewels. So it brought a lot of jewels and as a present to Lord Rama and came and bowed to Lord Rama saying, please forgive me. I am not an intelligent being, but that's how you have made me. So we are just inert people. We are following your laws. So now you please tell me what will I do? Because you have made me like this that I should not cross my bounds. I should not change my nature. I am full of water. You can make me try, but that's no glory or service on my part. So in what way can I be of service to you? So when Lord Rama heard these words, he smiled and he said, okay, all this army has to cross the ocean, cross you. In what way? The be you, you suggest what is the best possible way because you do not want me to dry yourself. So please suggest what is the best way. So then Ocean says that there are two people, two monkeys in your army. Their names are Neela and Nala. They had received a boon in their childhood from a sage. The boon was that if they touch stones, no matter how big the stones are, they could be even boulders or small mountains. They will, when they when they touch them and throw them in the water, the stones will float. That's the boon they have. So by your grace, as well as by the power of their boons, you can easily create a bridge made of all these stones. And then you go you, along with your army, you can cross me. It will increase your glory and it will also give your devotees something to sing about you. So Lord Rama likes that advice and then he asks, look, I have already taken out this arrow and this arrow cannot go wasted. So it has to find, I, I will not dry you now. So suggest a possible target for this arrow. So Ocean said that there is a, on one of its shores, there is this colony of demons who are very problematic. So he requests Lord Rama to throw the arrow in their direction and kill all those demons there. And that's what Lord Rama did. So Ocean was happily, very happy and went back to its abode. That means Ocean God, God, God went back. So this is the close of Sundara Kanda. And uh, Tulsi Dasji uh, closes it with this verse. Sakal Sumangal Dayak Ragunayak Gunagan Sadar Sunahite Tarahi Bhav Sindhu Bena Jaljan. Reciting the virtues of Sri Rama, it is the source of all the blessings. Those who reverently hear them, they cross this worldly ocean without any boat. Just by the name of the Lord himself itself, name and the glories and the place of the Lord itself is the boat for crossing the ocean. So now we start the Lanka Kanda, the next chapter, the sixth chapter. So if you look, look at here, these are the seven chapters in Manas and these are the number of verses. Sundar Kanda had 60 verses, relatively small, but very important and very beautiful as the name suggests. Sundara means beautiful. It was indeed a chapter with many beautiful incidents. And now the Lanka Kanda. 
Lanka is the name of the city the which Ravana rules. So now all the happenings are in that place. Therefore, the name of the chapter is Lanka Kanda. It is also known as Yuddha Kanda. Yuddha means the battle, the war, because this chapter primarily describes the battle between two armies, battle armies of demons of Ravana and army of Ram. So Tursidaji starts this chapter with this verse. Lavanimesh Paramanu Jugu Barash Kalap Sarichand Bhajasinamanti Hiramu Ko Kalu Jasu Ko Dand Oh my mind, why do you not worship Sri Rama? Who has the time for his bow, the indivisible time? And various divisions of time. So in Vedic literature, the time has been dealt in with a lot of details which are not found in other places. So the very smallest to the very largest divisions of time, it is mentioned there. So those are the, some of the names are in Sanskrit, it's difficult to translate them in English because there are no equivalent words. But Lava, Nimesha, Parmanu, Yuga, Barasha, Kalpa. So he's saying that all these are his arrows, these divisions of time. In other words, the death is always approaching and it is coming in the sort of these divisions of time to us. Second minute in the modern terminology, if we want to tell that second minute, hour, day, uh, week, month, year, and so on. And Lord Rama, he is the Lord of death itself. So one who worships Lord Rama will be free from this fear of death and all these things will not, uh, the passing of the time will not affect him. So once Ocean gave this advice that how to build the bridge upon me, the effort to make the bridge started and every, these two monkeys, Nala and Neela, they were in all enthusiasm that they have the opportunity to serve the Lord. And all the monkeys, they started bringing big, big boulders and trees from different places. And Nala and Neela, they will take them and throw them in the ocean and all these things will float. Everybody understood that even though it was a boon which Nala and Neela had received in their childhood, but it's because of the grace of Lord Rama that the finally the bridge was, bridge was built. So a nice, sturdy, strong bridge was built finally in a very short time. And uh, that bridge is known as Rama Setu. It is the Literally meaning is that bridge of Lord Rama, Rama Setu. When Lord Rama saw the bridge, he saw the place, he felt very happy. He said it is a very beautiful place, very holy place. Its glory is such that nobody can describe it. I want to establish Lord Shiva here. So Lord Shiva, normally people when they establish Lord Shiva, they just prepare a Shiva Lingam. Many of you who might have seen Shiva Lingam, it's like a round stone. So that's how the Lord Shiva, the, the, that shows a formless form because it's round, it has no beginning, no end. So that's one of the ways 
to try to put the infinite into a fine to try to model to try to represent the infinite in a finite manner so lord rama established a shivalingam there and that was known as rameshwaram that place is still there in south india it's a very considered one of the four holy places in india one of the four holy major holy places in india uh char dham so it is still there it is considered very auspicious and also the bridge which lord rama made from that point it is it is said that lord rama broke that bridge later on after all the purpose was served there are some remnants still there which have been located by the satellite it's also known as adams bridge so people believe that those remnants are of the same bridge which was created by this monkey army of lord rama so after establishing shivalingam lord rama worshiped lord shiva with all the rituals and then he told everybody who was there that there is nobody as dear to me as lord shiva himself if somebody thinks that they can be my devotee but have the do not like lord shiva or dislike lord shiva that person may call himself a devotee but to me that person will never find me even in the dream it is a impossible thing that somebody hates lord shiva and tries to become my devotee will never work he will instead go to hell so this is where you see the different aspects of the same divinity one may like one aspect and love it but when you try to dislike or hate another aspect then you are basically hating your own lord because it is his aspect on so therefore in india since time immemorial there were always multiple manifestations of divine all worshiped by different people as per their own interest and capacity but without any enmity between them or mostly i mean sometimes there was and probably that's what lord rama is trying to address here but generally it has been a very understanding way of that one divine can have multitudes of forms and then they when lord rama started crossing the ocean all the all the fishes and other creatures of the ocean they came to the surface to see the lord and they when they see the lord they forgot to blink their eyes they are just became still right on the surface of the world the whole spectacle was such that the water itself was invisible near the ocean because it became a huge row of all these huge creatures of ocean like sharks crocodiles whales and all the all these big creatures they as if they that formed another bridge parallel bridge of these ocean creatures and many of the monkeys when they are going because there was too much crowd on this bridge the stone bridge which uh, uh, lord rama uh, created so they started passing through that bridge also some of the monkeys going on the back of the creatures of the ocean and some of them were just flying some distance and again going like that in very playful mood all the army along with rama and lakshmana they crossed the ocean when they crossed the ocean lord rama took a spot on one of the mountains near lanka and he and came there he told all the monkeys in the army to relax and to find the fruit trees nearby 
so many of the trees they started bearing the fruit and uh, they all the monkeys were very happy and slowly ravana came to know that lord rama has crossed the ocean along with the whole with the whole army and he just couldn't believe his ears when he heard that news so tulsidas ji he writes this verse it's a, it's a beautiful verse it shows the power of sanskrit bandhyo ban nidhi nir nidhi jaladi sindhu baris satya to nidhi kampate udadi payodhi nadis so ravana is saying hey, what has he really created a bridge and crossed the ocean it's not like creating the bridge on the river it's creating the bridge on the ocean and why i was saying the power of sanskrit because there are 10 words here vananidhi nirnidhi jalanidhi sindhu baris toynidhi kampati udadhi payodhi nadis all these 10 words they are synonyms for ocean so there are so many synonyms 10 of course this is not just 10 there are many more but in this words he has given 10 because ravana he is supposedly has 10 heads so he got so, so surprised hearing this news he got so alarmed he he is speaking through all the 10 mouths at the same time uh, giving the different words for ocean so naturally it th- this words cannot be lit- literally translated into the into english because english doesn't have so many synonyms for ocean so that's why the translation looks a little bit strange here uh, somebody whoever has tried to translate it then when mandodari heard that that lord has come on this side of the ocean now he is at the doorstep of lanka and just as a as if in play he built this bridge on the ocean and crossed the whole army she got really alarmed from the beginning itself she had this faith that he, rama, rama is no ordinary person he is the lord himself and she tried to reason with her husband ravana earlier also that returned sita to lord rama ravana would not give any heed to that advice so again she tries to find ravana separately in her and and bring bring him in in her room and very softly very gently she te- she she tells him that i am going to request you something please don't be angry it is better to establish enmity with somebody whom you can win with your strength or wisdom but the difference between you and lord rama is like firefly and the sun even though both give them the light, both give light a little bit firefly as well as sun but comparison is sort of meaningless and then she says that you have already accomplished everything you have already enjoyed all the things which could be enjoyed in this world you have won over all the kings and the regions including the gods and demons and men whatever could be one so now you are also getting older at this at this age after accomplishing all this you are still longing for somebody else's wife that's not proper sages have said that in the fourth stage of life life a king should be going to the forest and meditate upon the lord who is the 
creator, sustainer, and dissolver of the whole universe, whole thing. So when she she again and again she says that, please listen to my advice. The best course of action for you is that to return Mother Sita to Lord Rama. Do not be so haughty. Do not be so arrogant. That way. He will definitely forgive you, and he will return from here. He is no ordinary person. And then, when he hears all that, he doesn't take anything seriously what Mandodari said. He asks, like, "You are my wife. You know about me. You know about my power, my strength. What is the cause of this fear that you are having?" all these people gods demons human beings they are all under my control so there is no cause of fear for you if they come here monkeys and bears they will be the food for my army so nothing to worry about so like that with a lot of arrogance he goes to his royal court mandodari ravana's wife she understood in her heart that it is just that death under the spell of death my husband has become so arrogant that he doesn't understand anything so there is a famous saying in sanskrit that when death is about to come once intellect stops working it goes in the opposite direction so that's what mandodari thinks that his impending death has turned his head then ravana goes to the royal court of course the news there that lord rama has come with the whole army that was presented and it was discussed and ravana asks all his ministers what do you think what should we do so they all said what lord what are you talking about what are you asking is it even worth worrying about they all they all will be food for us so like that they are again trying to just please ravana with his words rather than giving him any proper advice there was a son of ravana his name was prahastha also in the court after all these ministers they had said the words like this to please ravana he he was not happy listening to all that so he got up and said my father my lord i want to say something i don't want to transgress the bounds of propriety but i want to tell you that all your ministers who have given you this advice that nothing to worry about they are fools they 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 do not know what is the right thing all their effort is just to please you somehow instead of telling you what is the right thing and he said they are telling that monkeys are their food and nothing to worry about what happened to them what happened to their hunger when hanuman was here and he was burned he killed your son and burnt your city what happened at the time where were all these people and then he says if you really ask me the best thing is that you return mother sita to lord rama and after that if he goes back all and good if he does not go back and he still tries to have a fight with you then we'll fight with the, with the, with them properly and uh, uh, give them a good fight when ravana heard that he was very upset and he scolded his son that where have you got this kind of wisdom to give this kind of advice are you in my side or are you on enemy side if you are already thinking enemy is so strong how will you fight so like that he just uh, dismissed him prahasta when he heard that 
he also thought that just like when the death is about to approach, none of the medicines work. Similarly, when person is to approach death, none of the advice, none of the good advice also works. So he left the court. But he still remained in Lanka. He fought also later on from Ravana's side. He was not like a devotee of Lord Rama, but he was giving a very practical advice uh, to Ravana, which Ravana did not like. So this is one thing which is very prominent in whole Manas, that Ravana was so enamored of Sita that he would never like anybody to tell him, return Sita to Rama. That he, 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 no matter whether his brother, his grand, grandmother, grandfather, his son, nobody, he, no, he, he like, did not like anybody. He could not hear these words that return Sita to Lord Rama, no matter what. Even though he is seeing, everybody is telling that death is your at, at your doorstep, he, 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 he could not take that as an advice. The only exception was his wife, Mandodari. He never scolded her. Mandodi again and again told him that return Sita to Rama. So Ravana never scolded Mandodi. He always tried to laugh it off. He always tried to tell her that oh, you are so fearful. But he never tried, never scolded her. This shows one side of Ravana's character that even though he was having many wives and he bought women from wherever he liked. He at the same time maintained such a tremendous respect for his wife Mandodari that he never uh, said harsh words to Mandodari despite Mandodari telling him again and again return Sita to Rama. He did not care for anybody else giving that advice. He just scolded threw them out of the kingdom whether it was Bhivishana, his brother, his grandfather, Malyavan, his uh, very uh, trusted spies, or his son, but only exception was his wife. So he had so much respect, despite having all his other characteristics, but he had respect for his wife. So there was a, uh, when Lord Rama, he is sitting on the mountain now, it's in the night. He is surrounded by chieftains of his army, mainly his devotees, Hanuman, his brother Lakshmana, Angada, Sugriva, Bibhishana. Then Lord Rama looks at the moon and he says, you all see moon is so bright, but it has this black spot. Tell me why this black spot? You, you, you make your own uh, guesses. Why, why this, what this black spot? Why there is black spot in the moon? So people are telling different, different things. So Griva says that, it is the shadow of the earth which is falling on the moon because of which this black spot is there. Then finally, Hanuman says that moon is your devotee, O Lord. And he has kept your form in his heart because Lord Rama is of dark complexion. He is of the dark hue. So he says it is because he has kept your form in his heart, that's where the black spot is coming from. So everybody was very happy to hear this kind of explanation. And uh, the, then uh, Lord Rama gets up in the morning and then he calls a meeting of all these chieftains and he asks, okay, now we have come here, we are at the doorstep of Lanka. What, what should be our next step? So Jamvant, who is the oldest and wise person, he says, if you ask me, my suggestion is that 
even at this point of time let us try to avoid this war if possible so let us still send one more messenger to ravan see if he can heed to our advice and for the messenger he suggested name of angada the son of, son of bali nephew of sugriva and uh, he is saying angad is both a combination of strength as well as wisdom and so lord rama likes this advice and he sends angada as a messenger as a messenger of peace message that to ravan and when he is sending angada he says that i don't have to tell you a lot i know you are very smart person you talk to talk with the enemy in such a manner that will advance my cause that will do my work but at the same time also what is good for him so which which also serves his interest so in that way, way you talk to him and he sent angada so right now our class time is over so we'll talk next time the discussion between angada and ravana so there are uh, there is a uh, question here the question is can you please explain the meaning of the word rameshwara ramasya ishwara yahasa rameshwara so rameshwara is the temple of lord shiva which lord rama established and uh, the meaning of the word as the person has suggested ramasya ishwara the lord of rama that is the simple meaning of rameshwara lord of rama that is referring to lord shiva so lord shiva considers lord rama as his lord and lord rama considers lord shiva as his lord because there is no difference between the two however rameshwara it also can be mean ramah ishwara yasya so the one for whom lord rama is the god and thus lord shiva so from lord shiva's perspective rameshwara means the one for whom lord is lord rama and from lord rama's perspective he considering lord shiva as his lord so he is saying ramasya ishwara rama's lord is lord shiva so it's a, it's a nice play of uh, the way you uh, dissect this compound you can have either of the meanings here rama's lord or one for whom lord is rama any other questions or comments please feel free to write okay we'll close the class with the prayers sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashit dukha bhag bhave om purnamadah purnamidam पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओ शाति 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 थैंक यू ऑल